Okay, great. All, All right. right. I'm ready to start when you are. All right, I think this is a good time to start. Welcome everyone to the Fatima Fellowship 2022 kickoff. This is Razan Baltajin, a PhD student at University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign and the Director of Operations at Fatima Fellowship. On behalf of the Fatima Fellowship team, I would like to welcome you all to today's launch webinar. We're so excited to launch for another year after our great experience with our 2021 cohort. Um, what is Fatima Fellowship? Fatima Fellowship is an open collaborative platform for AI and more generally computer science research and a doctoral application support program for worldwide prospective PhD applicants. The program aims to create a fellow-centered and an impact-driven global research collective that fosters inclusivity in the research community. The program hopes to achieve its aims through matching aspiring young researchers with expert uh, mentors in top CS PhD programs and leading industry research institutions, providing research skills development seminars, and finally providing support, advising, and one-on-one -on -one guidance and feedback on fellow PhD applications. Around 250 applicants from over 40 countries applied to the program last February. Selected 48 fellows have been paired with 18 mentors to work on 23 different projects. Why Fatima Fellowship? There are several foundational reasons behind launching this program. Computer science PhD programs have become increasingly competitive and particularly exclusive to international young researchers who lack the opportunity and connections for contributing to cutting edge research. Fatima Fellowship is proposing a new paradigm for academia that sees great value in the skills of young and aspiring young researchers from around the world. During today's webinar, we will start by presentations from our 2021 fellows. Our fellows will be sharing more about their Fatima Fellowship experience, as well as their work and progress during the program for the past nine months. Our webinar will also feature Dr. Abdurrahman Muhammad from Facebook or Meta AI Research for a short lecture with the title Lessons from Almost 20 Years of Fundamental and Applied AI Research. We will finally end with our 2022 launch with Avakir Abid, who will walk us through the program structure for the upcoming round. We will also officially launch our fellows application, so please keep tuned. Um, I guess that's all on my side. Please welcome our 2021 fellows. And for the first presentation, we will uh, we would like to welcome Tarek Naus, a 2021 fellow who also joined the Fatima Fellowship team as our communication head. Um, welcome Tarek and the floor is yours. Thank you, Razan. Uh, so hello everybody. Uh, my name is Tarek Naus. So let me just tell you a bit about my background. So as an undergraduate student, in uh, communications engineering at Beirut Arab University in Lebanon. I knew in my third year I, I wanted to do a PhD. So I started to do a bit of undergraduate research in machine learning for problems in communications. And I did apply at that time to maybe five or six PhD programs in the US, but I didn't get accepted in any. And uh, I didn't have a lot of research experience or a lot of papers at that time. So I knew I had to strengthen my research profile for better chances. And that's why I decided to do my master's at AUB also in Lebanon. And uh, I then worked on an dialogue uh, for Arabic during my master's. And like many of you at that time, I was just laying in bed on a Saturday morning, uh, scrolling through Instagram, when I got a message advertising the, the Fatima Fellowship, which is to be a really cool big program so i decided to apply and went through the application process like uh, just like you and then i got the opportunity to work uh, on a project with uh, abu Bakr abid from stanford on visual algorithms for plus and although i did have previous uh, experience uh, research experience the experience i had during the fatima fellowship was uh, very different it opened my eyes to a lot of things i didn't know and i gained a lot of research skills i didn't have and Abu Bakr also was very uh, supportive and helpful during the application cycle by providing tips and so on. And this is a really unique program that allows you to interact with top uh, researchers uh, at the quality and level of Abu Bakr. So make use of this opportunity if you get it. Uh, so I'm now a, a researcher at Qatar University and thankfully I've accepted to the machine learning PhD program at Georgia Tech and I'm sure that the Fatima Fellowship had a really positive impact on my application. So I'll bore you a little bit more now by giving an overview on my project, which is uh, visual clustering. So what we wanted to do in this project is address computational time issues with classical clustering and follow the human intuitive approach, which is just visualizing the data and clustering. And we do that through segmentation. And at the core of this algorithm, which has many steps, uh, is a segmentation develop that in this simple example you can see it takes a 2d plot of visualized data and then it uh, segments it and clusters it 
And without going into the nitty gritty of it, we can see the results in the next slide uh, where we see that uh, visual clustering allows us to cluster many different shapes and uh, patterns of data in a very quick time compared to other clustering algorithms, which do not allow us to cluster all of these patterns efficiently, except for one, but it does not scale for uh, more than a, a thousand samples. So like visual clustering allows us to do it uh, for millions of samples in real times. And if you want to know more, preprint and a very nice a GitHub implementation that you can use in a few lines of code. And this is something I learned uh, from my mentor is to have reproducible code that is easy to use uh, by others for having a really good impact. And I finally, I'd like to thank Mr. Abu Bakr, who's been a really uh, inspiring role model for me. Uh, not only is he a top researcher and mentor, but also a nice and humble guy, which I think is more important than anything else. And good luck. I hope you will have a wonderful experience like I did. Thank you so much, uh, Tarek. Uh, we'll uh, transition now. Uh, Bebab, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, sure. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Zabav Sharma. I'm currently pursuing my uh, Bachelor of Technology in Mechanical Engineering from Aligarh Muslim University, India. I've uh, been as a data science intern at United Health Group, Optum, which is a Fortune 5 company. I'm currently working as a data science intern at ShareChat. It's an Indian unicorn startup. At Fatima Fellowship 2021, I worked with my mentor, Mohammed Fateh Balin, who is a researcher from Georgia Tech. We worked on a project called um, Symbolic Mathematics uh, using deep learning. Talking about my learnings, uh, first and foremost is the uh, remote project management. I think it's a hot topic at currently tech ecosystem and really crucial. Um, and about the project, uh, like I, I personally uh, got an innovative one that really induced learning uh, about uh, different technologies that I have that I didn't work earlier. So I think it's going to be same for you as well. Third one, networking. I mean, the Fatima Fellowship provides so much diverse uh, fellows and mentors, and so you're not going to miss out on anything uh, in the networking part. The last learning I had was the uh, contribution accountability. I think. Uh, be it any uh, in, in in the industry or the academia, accountability is a really good thing, and I can say I really um, like learn much on that topic as well. Moving to the work that I uh, did, yeah. So we worked on the symbolic mathematics, particularly symbolic integration using the deep learning. So this problem has been taken as a black box problem or a language problem till now. Uh, basically, uh, feeding a function in the model and getting a prediction of the integral. Our approach was basically to divide the whole process into certain steps so as to introduce the interpretability in the process. For, the, for that reason, we uh, performed an extensive literature survey to see whether there's any work going on in that direction or not. Uh, but we couldn't find any um, crucial or country uh, or sorry, considerable work in that direction. So we proposed an architecture based on encoder and decoders that takes in the expression or the function, but instead of giving out a direct integral, it gives out a rule. That is to be applied to the function uh, to get a next uh, step. And the, after getting the next step, we use a symbolic package from Python or uh, a symbolic library that applies the rules to the function and gives us the next integral. And the loop goes on. The, next, the integral is further goes to the model and the rules is, rule is predicted. And the loop goes on until we get the final uh, integral. Uh, can we move, move to the next slide? Yeah. So let's take an example. Let's say there's a function that's x squared plus x cubed. Uh, now, after feeding to the model, it will give us the edge rule. Uh, edge rule will be applied and the function will be split in two different parts. Further, the rule will be uh, predicted using the model that will be the power rule for both the functions. Similarly, the, uh, using the symbolic package, the rule will be applied to the uh, subdivided functions and for, uh, finally we get the integral. Uh, so we basically perform various experimentation and we end up uh, on selecting the prefix notation for uh, something that is to be inputted in the model. So we basically convert our function to, the, to its prefix notation uh, that is used in the, in the training and prediction. We worked on a, preparing a really large data set around uh, 10 million of data points, uh, which is having the expression and the corresponding rules. Uh, and finally, we're using a symbolic uh, mathematic package that is SymPy. Our model is also able to reduce the time SymPy was taking earlier to decide what tool to apply to the function. And currently our model is trained on 4 million data set, uh, stands at the overall accuracy of 89%. And the rule accuracy, that is just predicting the rule, uh, which should to be applied at 91% accuracy. And it is like just the one fourth of our total data set. So we are training uh, like currently as well training the model and we are hope to get uh, much more better results. Conclusively, I just wanna uh, thank Abu Bakr Rizan for organizing such a 
wonderful fellowship and giving us this platform so that we could learn this much. And I'm highly going to recommend to uh, whosoever is attending the, this kickoff. Uh, thank you. All right. Thank you so much for that presentation. Very interesting stuff. And I'll just mention that uh, Fateh, your mentor, was one of my students two, three, three years ago. So it's, it's a continuous kind of, you know, we're, this is part of our goal of building this global research uh, community as well. So very interesting. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Awesome. Um, next up, we'll go to Omar. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, this is Omar Sharif. I am uh, teaching a research assistant at Nile University in Egypt. So I got my bachelor degree in computer science and engineering in 2018 and applied for master's degree in 2020. So last year, I joined the fellowship working with uh, Abu Bakr Abed from Stanford. And uh, I don't really uh, think that a couple of minutes is enough to thank him. So thanks a lot, Abu Bakr. Anyway, regarding my experience, so I have been able to work in a very active uh, research area that is regarding multitask learning. I also managed to build a model library for our method in order to make it easier for other researchers to integrate their work with ours. As well, I managed to meet and discuss and work with many brilliant people from all over the world and jointly published a book article along with my team, Amil Hanan and uh, Abu Bakr. So regarding our, maybe the next slide, please. So regarding uh, uh, multitask learning, uh, it is basically we want to develop one single model that is capable of doing multiple tasks simultaneously, that is to improve generalization or even using this computation power. And our objective was to focus on uh, when to use multitask learning and when to use single task learning. And this traditionally has been made there by some domain experts. So our approach is to extract some uh, feature representation and the model performance on each task and the bits of which we are clustering. Uh, to know the task groupings. Now I move on to my colleague Hanan, so you can present this one. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Hanan, I'm from Kashmir. I am right now a research assistant in the department at Mohammed bin Zayed University of Artificial Intelligence. Uh, uh, regarding my background, I did my undergrad in electronics and communication engineering with CSC minor from one of the National Institutes of India NIT Srinagar. After my undergrad, I joined Samsung's Harman facility where I was working as a machine learning engineer. Uh, regarding my Fatima fellowship experiences, I worked with Ubukar uh, Abid. I have been very fortunate to be working with him. It was a great experience for me. The most, uh, the important part I learned with the Fatima fellowship is how to effectively read research papers, which quite helped me in my research. I strengthened my implementation skills. And during, uh, and during this time, I also got an opportunity to hold the RA, RA position at MBZU AI. And recently I was selected in, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the research week with the Google. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, regarding, uh, next, uh, regarding my approach, I use vision transformers uh, for the multitask learning. As, as far as the best of my knowledge, no work has been done in multitask learning with the vision transformers. Uh, it's because of the time, uh, of the time constraints, I may not be able to go into the micro details of what I did. If you want to, if you want to know, know more about my approach, you may uh, uh, reach out to me after after this webinar. I think that's it from my side. Thank you so much, Anand. Yep, perfect. All right, Qasim. Uh, yeah. Hey there, everyone. I'm Qasim Wani. I am a senior at Virginia Tech studying computer engineering. Um, I've been doing ML research for the past year and a half now, and I previously interned at Qualcomm and will be joining Path AI full-time as an ML engineer, uh, where I get to work on cancer research. Um, Fatima Fellowship for me has been pretty great overall, and, and it's been the same for the other mentees here. Uh, I especially like the autonomy I had to lead an entire research project and had access to excellent mentors like Abu Bakr and Nazneen. Um, our entire our meetings were really productive and we got to have weekly discussions on uh, the progress and future directions of the project. I was able to draw upon their learnings to get better insights on uh, the project and not make the same mistakes um, as them. Uh, so for everyone in the Zoom session today, uh, I can guarantee you're making the right decision by deciding to apply for the fellowship. Uh, next slide. Yeah, so I had the opportunity to work on a pretty important challenge, 
problem in ML. Um, what happens if the training distribution is, is an IID uh, from the test distribution? And we see this all the time in the real world where let's say you take COVID for instance, if you were to build a CT scan model that would detect if a patient had COVID in early 2020, you would systematically under predict for COVID as the outbreak increased over time. Um, and this is because diseases cause symptoms. For our project, I focus on the case where the training label space differ drastically from uh, the test label space. Uh, next slide. Uh, so our approach was to combine statistical uh, techniques such as important sampling with meta-learning uh, to tackle this case of label shift or covariate shift estimation. I was able to do this by perturbing the initial distribution to a middle distribution uh, using important sampling and then using this new distribution to learn the final model parameters uh, by fine-tuning them using meta-learning. Our approach was tested on various computer vision data sets like MNIST and CIFAR, and we were also able to improve on uh, some of the other techniques in the extreme label shift case. Even though our paper was rejected from NeurIPS, most of the reviewers were pretty impressed by our unique approach to solving this challenging problem. Um, overall, it was, it was fun exploring this problem, and even though we didn't get the result we wanted, I'm very excited to continue working in the space of robust ML at Path AI. Um, thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kasim. That was super clear. It was very interesting work. All right, Talha. Oh, hi, everyone. This is Talha. I am from Pakistan. I did my undergrads in computer science last year. Um, and uh, it was in the middle of a pandemic going on and the labs were closing. So, but I had an interest in biology, uh, so there were many labs that were closing down, so I didn't have any opportunity to do any research. So this is where the Fatima Fellowship came in and they offered a really great program and I joined and I was able to pair up with a mentor who was interested in, you know, a, a project on biology. So my mentor, Dr. Marwan from Harvard University, um, they were interested in some, they had built some packages, uh, which I'll talk about in a bit. Uh, and uh, with this mentorship, I was uh, re uh, he was really supportive and, I, and, and he, he was able to help me with his uh, experience that he had done early with earlier work. And through this program, I gained a lot of uh, valuable research experience. Uh, I got to pair up with a mentor who was, uh, who was already doing active research. And I got the opportunity to network with other researchers who were working at the lab he was working on. And I, I was able to exchange ideas with them. And I think that was a really a fulfilling experience for me. So uh, can we go to the next slide? Uh, so yeah, I'll talk a bit about my project. So uh, the work, the lab where Dr. Marawan worked at, they had published a package called NetSupai. So it's built of several methods. They're, called, they're named after different animals. So they have a package called NetSupai that contains several animals like panda, lioness, puma, and many other animals. So they, the lab wanted to expose these animals, you know, to the public, to, to, to people who couldn't program, uh, who didn't have any programming experience. So they wanted to build a website that they could, you know, showcase their uh, methods to other people. So that is where this project came in. I worked on it for a year and a half uh, and, uh, and, uh, I, and I built up it up in Django and React and, uh, and some of the features that I built on this website included some common reconstruction, gene re network reconstruction files like the gene expression, the transcript factor motive files that the users could upload. And they could then perform these analysis against some uh, defined parameters on the website. And then they could also visualize the results on their website uh, uh, once the analysis was done and they can then view these results at a later time as well. And so the images that you see here are, are just some of some of the work I did on the website. And overall, it, is, it was a very great experience for me. I, I was able to, you know, fulfill my interest in biology and I got to pair up with an extremely talented mentor. And I, I would highly recommend uh, this program to, to all the people in this session. So thank you. Thank you so much, Talha. Uh, super, super interesting work. All right, our final uh, uh, fellow that we're gonna hear from today is Shadi. Hello everyone, uh, it's uh, great to see you all here. Um, so my name is Shadi Hamdan and I'm a 2021 uh, Fatma Fellow, uh, as were the rest. 
Um, so I've recently obtained my bachelor's in computer engineering um, just uh, this January from Koch University. Um, and I'm currently working as an NLP research uh, and develop, development engineer at uh, Shallow AI. Um, so during the Fatma Fellowship, uh, I was closely mentored by two uh, great PhD students, uh, Abu Bakr Abid and uh, Faraz Abzaid uh, from uh, Stanford University. Um, and as my research project as part of the fellowship, I worked on measuring and reducing harmful biases in language models such as uh, GPT-3 uh, and BERT. Um, so for this presentation, I'll be focusing more on the issues that I faced as an international student uh, when applying to PhD programs and less on the uh, technical details. Um, so uh, one of the first and most important issues that I faced is um, a lack of mentorship and guidance when looking for programs and applying. Um, and this is mainly because I have no one in my family that uh, that has pursued engineering, and I don't really know anyone who um, pursued a PhD. So I really had like no one to look to or like ask for these questions: How do I apply? How do I look for a program? And so on. Um, the second issue that I faced is uh, my peers during my education. Um, were not really, uh, did not really share the same interests that I did. So, uh, so most of them were interested in pursuing a career uh, after uh, finishing or um, like uh, just uh, taking a, a master's and also like uh, pursuing a career. Um, another important issue that I faced is also I did not have a rigorous research experience. Um, and since uh, PhD programs are heavily research-based, um, this was a bit of a disadvantage for me. Um, so thankfully, I stumbled across the Fatma Fellowship, and it helped me massively uh, for all of these things. Um, so uh, one of the most important things is, of course, the mentorship that I had. Um, so I, since I got mentorship from PhD students, uh, they were able to give me basically very relevant and useful advice since they went through the same process that uh, I uh, was going through. Um, another great thing is also that I got to meet and work with other students that share the same interests which was uh, very uh, useful. So I didn't feel like I was uh, alone during this process, which is very important. Um, also, another uh, very important thing was the seminars that we had uh, during the fellowship. Um, so we got to hear from professors and researchers uh, who were able to tell us basically how does the uh, university admission process work, what do committees look for in an application, and so on. And this made me uh, feel like uh, I'm better able to gear my application towards uh, these programs. So I was better, more confident in this. Um, and finally, uh, not finally, uh, another thing <laughs> uh, is uh, I got also got to work uh, on a research project uh, where I basically got to uh, research experience, which made me more confident uh, when applying. And last but not least, um, since we had a shared Slack, uh, we were sharing different opportunities, different uh, research experiences and so on. And I got to uh, find out about a, a lot of opportunities that I would not have otherwise. And this is uh, also very useful. Um, so overall, I strongly recommend that you apply to this program. Uh, and yeah, I wish you all luck. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shadi, for that, for that nice summary. Let's give all of our presenters a virtual round of applause. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> um, OK. With that, we are going to actually transition. Uh, we're actually going to change gears. We are very, very lucky to have uh, Dr. Abdurrahman Muhammad joining us today. Uh, he is joining us from Meta AI. So previously, that was known as Facebook AI Research or FAIR. Um, Dr. Abdurrahman Muhammad has been in the game for, for almost 20 years. He's been doing machine learning research, fundamental and applied AI research for almost 20 years. So before FAIR, he was a scientist and manager at Amazon's Alexa AI team. And then before that, a researcher at Microsoft Research. Uh, he did his PhD at University of Toronto. So working with luminaries like uh, Gerald Penn and Jeffrey Hinton. And he was part of that team that originally started that deep learning revolution in speech in 2009. So Dr. Abdurrahman Muhammad, thank you so much for joining. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and pause. Uh, I'm gonna pause my screen sharing and let's see if I can go ahead and the recording. Perfect. Okay, so with that, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the Fatma Fellowship 2022. So we had, I saw a lot of questions on the Q&A and in the chat channel about how does the program actually work? How do the applications work? So I'll try to address that uh, really quickly in the next few minutes, and hopefully we'll have some time to answer questions at the end as well. 
So just as a quick reminder, our goal at the Fatima Fellowship is to create a global research community and allow international students, particularly those who intend to apply to PhD programs, to contribute to cutting edge research. Um, and the way we do that is by uh, you know, matching researchers with mentors, providing seminars, and giving feedback to strengthen PhD applications. So it practically, concretely, the way this works, if you look at the kind of the uh, year in the life of a fellow, the program starts in April. And for the first six or seven months, we focus on uh, providing you with research, you know, connecting you with a mentor, and then the mentor works with you on a research project. Um, the research project is designed to be something that can be attainable in six or seven months. Um, and you, you, you kind of work on that. And towards the end, since most of the, the fellows that we admit apply to PhD programs, uh, towards the end of the, the last couple of months, the goal is for the mentor and the fellow to work together to strengthen the PhD application as much as possible by reviewing you know, the statement of purpose, that kind of thing. Throughout the whole program, all nine months, we have these seminars that we hold every couple of months or so. And these seminars are focused on general topics that are of interest. So how do I, you know, what kind of questions uh, can I, you know, uh, how do I prepare for my PhD uh, application? What kind of things do the, does the committee, adm admission committee look at? to things like you know, how to read a research paper, how to write um, you know, a research paper, things of general kind of importance. And some of the fellows talked about this before. Um, so as part of this program, our mentors, um, what we ask of our mentors and what our mentors do is that they, they work with the fellows on an impactful research project. So the, the, the mentors come up with something that can be attainable in about six months um, and that can be, kind of, can be accomplished and lead to a nice outcome. And our mentors will meet with you, will meet with the fellows on a regular basis. Um, and that's usually determined between the mentor and the fellows. Um, and then finally, like I mentioned, the mentors will advise the fellows on grad school applications. And we have mentors that come from fantastic labs in both universities and uh, industry as well. So in order to make this work, um, we ask our fellows to commit a good amount of time to their research projects in order to actually have impact and in order to have uh, you know, something that you can be proud of by the end of the fellowship, you need to actually dedicate a good amount of time. Um, we've seen the best projects come if the fellows are able to dedicate you know, 15, 20 hours a week uh, to these projects. Um, and then it, it, it helps a lot because by the end of it, you're, you know, you're in a position where you have a lot of experience, where you have a lot of uh, you know, uh, experience that can help you with actually starting your PhD. Um, and then the other thing that we do is we ask the fellows to log their research prog progress weekly. Um, it helps uh, hold everyone accountable. And then the final part is the seminars that I keep mentioning, which is, you know, if they're held once every two months, roughly. And then um, this is a, a screenshot from one of our seminars last year where we had a Stanford professor, James Zhou, come and just talk about, like, he's, he has admitted, you know, lost and lost of PhD students to Stanford. And so he talked about what does he look for when he actually admits a PhD student. And that was, I think, a very useful uh, talk for many of our fellows. Um, this year, we're also very lucky that we actually have sponsorship. Um, so we're being sponsored by Hugging Face, which is uh, it's a, it's a company that focuses a lot on open machine learning, open science, open source tools. And through their sponsorship, we're able to provide uh, some free computational resources to each research project. So this will hopefully accelerate these projects and allow you to kind of you know, do machine learning from wherever you are uh, through these resources. Okay, let's talk about like the practical steps in the application and the fellowship. So we today, March 13th is the kickoff session. So after this talk, uh, we're, we're gonna open up the applications. So you guys can all apply to become fellows. The application deadline is gonna be March 31st, so at the end of this month. Um, but we encourage you to start uh, applying as soon as possible because what's going to happen in the next few weeks is oops, um, is that mentors will start interviewing their fellows for their project. So based on your profiles, um, mentors will reach out to you and say, okay, you know, this fellow could be a potentially good fit based on our, you know, I have good back, I have a background in this field. The fellow has background in this field, and so we could potentially work together. Um, and so. Uh, mentors will reach out to fellows and they will kind of interview them to see if, if, it's, a, if it's a good fit for the project that they have in mind. Um, so the application is your chance to show that, hey, I'm, I'm kind of, this is, these are the areas that I know really well. Um, and the mentors will then reach out to you. And so we encourage you to just apply as soon as you can. Um, and then in the next month or so, throughout March and April, 
mentors will interview their, their fellows and then select, select the fellows that ultimately become part of the Fatima Fellowship. So you'll know one way or another by April 30th, um, kind of whether or not you're uh, uh, selected to be a fellow. Um, yeah, and if, uh, if applications are actually officially open right before this webinar, we uh, opened up the applications. So if you go on FatimaFellowship.com, you can go ahead and, and actually uh, apply as a, as a fellow, or if you're interested in being a mentor, because I know there's some people who ask questions about being a mentor as well, you can also sign up to be a mentor and then we'll be in touch with you shortly. So with that, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I want to thank you all. Thank you so much, you know, presenters. Thank you so much for presenting. Uh, Dr. Abdurrahman, thank you so much for being our keynote speaker. Uh, thank you to our organizers. And thank you, of course, to all of the folks who attended in the audience. Um, so virtual <laughs> round of applause to all of you guys. <laughs> thank you. Um, and with that, I know I'm sure that there are questions. We'll try our best to try to answer some questions here. But if we do not get a chance to ask your questions, just uh, 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 tweet at us <laughs> at Fatima Fellowship or email us as well. The email is on the website. And so that way we'll make sure to be able to respond to you. Um, let's see, are there any quick questions that I can, I can respond to here? Um, so in the chat, there's a lot for the, a lot of, okay. Um, okay. Okay, I think we can receive also questions by email. That would be also great. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, if you wanna share, if you wanna share the email here, Razan, for everyone. Um, okay, let's take a look at it here. Um, well, there's a lot of questions. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see here. Let's just start from the beginning of this list and let me see how many I can get to. Uh, at many places for ML and they ask people to have a PhD, what would be your advice for tackling this issue? Okay, so that's a good question. Um, so it's a little bit outside the scope of this, but real quickly. Um, so sometimes when you're applying for jobs, uh, people, they'll ask for you to have a PhD, but sometimes jobs will put qualifications that they don't actually need. So take a look at the job description. Sometimes if you have like, you know, 70, 80% of what they're asking for, um, the final 20% may not matter and you should still apply. Of course, it feels like it's a very experienced role. Maybe there's another role that will work for you. So you can still reach out to the company and say, hi, I'm interested in working here. I don't have a PhD. Is there something else that would work better? Um, okay, so I kind of answered that. Um, how much does your undergrad grades matter for applying to a PhD? Okay, yeah, so a lot of, a lot of fantastic questions. <laughs> I don't think I can do them justice in the last couple of minutes. Um, so what I will, what I'll do instead is, you know, like I mentioned, you know, all of these different avenues are available for answering questions. We'll try our best to answer all of the questions that we receive. Um, and in the meantime, yeah, like just like email us, let us know, tweet at us. If you have questions about the application in particular, or if you have general questions, we'll try our best to do that as well. Um, anything else we should we should do? Um, was that any last words or? Um, we're actually fine. Uh, thank you all for joining. Thanks so much. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Take care.